Maryam says, can we wear pro proper without wearing niqab, just wearing hijab? So I believe that Maryam is asking about covering the face. Is it a must or not? This is an issue of dispute among scholars. And whenever there is a dispute among scholars, as Muslims, we should not take the easiest. So, so many people say, Alhamdulillah, this is an issue of dispute, meaning that we can choose whatever we want. And this is not true. Allah says in the Quran, فَإِن تَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ Whenever you dispute over an issue, don't go to this scholar or that. Don't go cherry picking. Don't choose whatever is easier for you or more convenient for you. Rather, you should refer back to the Quran and to the Sunnah. Nowadays, with search engines, we can easily find some person stating that this or that is halal. And this is convenient for us. So if, I am, if I'm a smoker and wherever I go and check and ask, they tell me tobacco is haram. It's harmful, there is tar, there's nicotine, and it harms your body. And I don't like this, frankly. So I Google it, I search for it, and then I find that there is a scholar somewhere who's a real genuine scholar, but he made a ruling and he gave a fatwa stating that it is halal. It's strong. This does not discredit this scholar because if we look in his work, if we would find that he has done great job, but he's not infallible. He makes mistakes and this is one of them. Now for me, as a cherry picker, I would highlight the book, underline it, photocopy it, expand and enlarge the photocopy and show everybody that Sheikh so-and-so, the great Sheikh, the great Allama, the great scholar said it's halal. This doesn't work this way. This is religion, this is deen. The Egyptians are witty people and they love to joke. So one of them used to say about smoking pot, smoking grass, marijuana, hash, whatever you want to call it. And he was stoned like crazy and he said, listen, if it's haram, we're burning it. And if it's halal, we're smoking it. So the end result is one, he is smoking it. And if it's haram, okay, I'm burning it. Why are you, why are you mad? I'm destroying it, but I'm, I'm inhaling. Not like Clinton, he did not inhale. No, he did. So this way of cherry picking is haram. When we come to the issue of niqab, the covering of the face, we find that there are many evidences commanding a woman to cover her face. And there are a handful, few evidences stating otherwise. So when an objective person looks into these evidences, he finds that so many talk about niqab and it being mandatory and obligatory. And there are five or six incidents where might insinuate that it is not mandatory. 
anyone would logic say would say that yes the vast majority of the hadiths and the evidences prove that it is mandatory so we would consider the other four or five or six handful of evidences stating otherwise to be either an incident isolated from the general trend or something that was abrogated later on if you look at the quran you will find that allah in chapter 33 surah al-ahzab orders the mothers of the believers to cover their faces in verse 53 no one argues about this verse and whenever you ask them for utensils, ask them from beyond a visor, a hijab. So all schools of thought say that it is mandatory. No difference of opinion that the wives of the Prophet must cover their faces. Agreed? Everybody says, yep, we agree to that. Okay, go six ayahs later on verse 59 and you will find that the prophet والسلام, is instructed by allah Azza wa Jal, to order his wives daughters the women of the believers to draw down their jalabib so that they would not be recognized and hence harassed so the reason for drawing down, pulling down your jalabib, the plural of jilbab, is that you are not recognized and hence abused or harassed. So this is addressing the wives of the Prophet ﷺ. If you combine this to the ayah, Number 53, which we all agree that it is mandating the women of the Prophet ﷺ to wear the niqab, to, to veil their faces. So Allah is telling them to veil their faces here again. So we know their hijab. But He's including with them the daughters of the Prophet ﷺ and the women of the believers. And justifying this by saying so that they would not be recognized and hence harassed and abused. And how is a woman recognized? By her face. So if she covered her face, no one, no one would dare to harass her or to abuse her. And there are so many other evidences that this is not the time to expand upon them. Therefore, it's an issue of dispute, yes, but the most authentic opinion is that a woman's face is the most beautiful thing in her. If a man were to marry a woman, the first thing his mother is going to say to him, Wallahi, she, her face is like the moon. No mother would start by saying she's like a, a four foot nine or uh, five foot and she is petite she has this body figure so and so and so her hair is so and so and so when she has the face of a monkey the first thing that a man looks for is a beautiful face to walk to wake up looking at and to go to sleep looking at so the figure the body the hair all of these are secondary important but the most important thing is the face so if the face was exposed and everybody can see it, that would cause a lot of fitna in the world. And this was not the case at the time of the Prophet and It should not be the case at our times as well. And Allah Azza wa knows best.